It's time once again to trigger a few more people <laughs> that take this all too seriously. And the topic today is Dr. Floyd Toole, who is at the heart of it, a researcher that was working at the National Research Council here in Canada, and then shifted over to Harman, which is a big audio manufacturer, and continued his work there, his research there, funded by them. And um, I gotta say that, like, okay, I'm gonna give you a little brief history about me, all right? I was very deep in audio, the hobby, you know, 15 years ago. Then I, I stepped away from it to concentrate on other things this year. <laughs> so it kind of brings me full circle around again here. But then I started up again in audio, well, getting back into the hobby about two years ago. And I kept hearing his name coming up and kept hearing his ideas popping up, usually in opposition to what I was saying. And so I did a little bit more research myself and looked into him. I watched a few of his interviews and a few of his talks and so on and so forth. I didn't buy his book because I think he covers the gist of what he's saying in all of his talks and interviews. So I didn't see the need in buying his book. Um, you know, I bought audio books before. <laughs> they basically sat around while I read more interesting books. I read books all the time. I love to read, but I don't like reading technical manuals or something like that. I like reading fiction or, you know, good literature. All right, so, yeah, so I got the gist of what he was saying from that. And here's my view on him. Here's the way I look at him. I look at him in the same way as I would look at, say, John Maynard Keynes in economics. Now, okay, I should point out that I'm not an expert on audio and I'm not an expert on economics, but I know a little bit about both things, in particular about economics, because about, I don't know, six, seven years ago, my financial advisor at my bank started talking like communist, and I decided to take that, um, you know, looking after that kind of stuff into my own hands. So I had to kind of at least minimally educate myself. And so if you do, I mean, if you, if you, if you are looking into economics, you're going to run across Keynes. Keynes is very famous, and uh, he was a brilliant economist, ec economist, I mean. But um, he had some ideas that, that people latched onto. And when I say people, I particularly mean uh, politicians, okay? They, he gave the answers to the things that they wanted to hear, okay? They, wanted, they want things to be a certain way. And he had all of the answers that they need. And it's very similar with Tool, okay? The things that he was saying are very attractive to a lot of people, especially science, people that think they're science-based. And the idea that there'd be a standardized way of looking at, you know, speaker performance in particular. And how you can judge how good a pair of speakers are by their measurements. And even predict what they're going to do in the room. So in the last video I made in this series, I talked about the concept of the typical room and how there really isn't one. Okay. Now I should go a little bit deeper into that. The predictions for the typical room are really uh, limited to above, say, 500 hertz. The predictions that you can get from the measurements start at around 500 and go up. But at the same time, and this comes from uh, Tool's own mouth about, you know, listener preference. The biggest deciding factor for most listeners is bass performance. And bass performance is highly affected by the room. So dimensions, you know, absorptive qualities of the room, you know, how much reflection you have. How, many, how much furniture you have in there, and so on and so forth. And 
Therefore, it's predicting something that's basically safe. You know, it's a safe prediction to say that above 500 hertz, the speaker is going to sound this way. It's going to perform this way. When everybody, well, especially, especially the average listener, okay, what really impresses them is bass performance, low-end performance. If it sounds full and deep and rich and, you know, not, not too boomy, then that really sounds good. Anything above that probably sounds very similar. And it's not going to be a, a big deciding factor for them. So like I said before, you know, the appeal of what he's providing, what his research is showing, is that it's providing easy answers to these complex questions or previously complex questions. You know, you know before uh, speaker reviews based on measurements came along, you would have to go and listen to the speakers at least in a, in a showroom or something like that. They get an idea what they sound like. And then, you know, you buy them, bring them home. Worst comes to worst, you could bring them back, right? But now this answers all those questions, gives a predicted result, you know, gives you measurements that are kind of cast in stone, tells you whether it's good or bad, you know, totally binary thing. You know, this one's good, this one's bad, and gives you the predictive results for your room because you, we all live in typical rooms, right? So the person brings the speakers home, he sets them up, and he's happy. This is what people want to have. This is what they want. They want that, that surety, that reassurance that they're getting something and they're not being ripped off. In other words, it's an antidote for the subjective review. It is the so-called objective review where the data is looked at and the predicted performance in the room is looked at as well. And on this, you decide whether you're going to like the pair of speakers or not. So getting back briefly to our friend Keynes, he did kind of a similar thing. He came up with a lot of answers, you know, simple, easy answers for fairly complex problems. He put it out there. He didn't offer any actual solutions. He just said that this could work potentially, or, you know, you could try this or that. And the people that wanted to hear that latched onto it and ran with it. Now, I'm not saying Okay, because the same thing goes for Keynes, all right? He had a lot of incredibly good ideas as well. And not everything that the tool says is bad. And I'm not saying that what he's doing necessarily is truly bad because this is just audio, guys. It's not, you know, the end of the world. But I think that audio, <laughs> uh, the state of audio was a lot more exciting, a lot more interesting than it is now, say, 25, 30, 40 years ago. A lot more interesting. Okay, there was, first of all, there was a lot more of it. Everybody was going out buying stereo equipment, right? Almost nobody is now. They're listening on their phone with earbuds and so on. They don't care about actual sound quality. All they want is listen to some music. So the final point I want to make on Dr. Floyd Tool's work is that it was... Um, consumer centric. All right. Now working for Harman, he was trying to find out what the consumer wanted. That'd be the average consumer, not the consumer that's really super interested in sound quality, not the consumer who, you know, spends a year building a listening room in his basement and fine tuning that and in building a system that works well in there, that took almost, well, more than a year, that's not the person that he was doing this work for. He was doing this work for the average consumer. He was doing it for Harman. That's Harman's uh, market, the average consumer, not the high-end consumer, not the high-end listener, but the average listener who's you know, leafing through the latest magazine while, you know, the music's playing in the background and his kids are screaming and his wife is nagging and he's trying not to hear it and so on and so forth and really doesn't listen to the music to begin with. All he needs is something that approximates <laughs> what approaches good sound quality. He doesn't really need sound quality. So what that means is that research has a very specific use case. It's for 
consumer products bought by the average consumer. And, you know, you're talking about somebody that's going to be spending less than a thousand bucks on a pair of speakers that is not overly concerned about sound quality, doesn't spend hours listening to music, you know, intently listening to music for the enjoyment of it, but has it playing in the background and it needs to be good enough for him. That's the use case for that research. And the consumer products we're talking about here are not, like I said before, going to be very different from each other. Okay, it is kind of ridiculous to look at them in detail as in measuring them, you know, quite extensively to determine, you know, if this one's just a little bit better than that one. When in reality, first of all, the, the average consumer is not going to hear the difference. He doesn't care about the difference. And once he brings it into his room, that's all going to change anyway. Now, before I go, I want to talk about one other thing. And that's the reason why I'm doing these videos. Like, why am I, you know, am I just, you know, looking for views, which is kind of crazy because this is like a secondary channel for me. If I really wanted to get views, you know, I'd make videos from a main channel and I would get views there. I, you know, the views I'm getting here are just pocket change compared to that. So I'm doing this from a, from a, you know, a perspective of someone that's interested in the topic and wants to put an alternate voice out there. And I noticed from the amount of likes on the videos that I make on this topic, and now there are more dislikes as well, but that's, <laughs> that goes with the territory, but the average amount of likes are higher for these types of, so I'm actually, you know, reaching some people with this stuff. And, and my main driver here is that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sick of getting this stuff thrown in my face whenever I, you know, make a video talking about uh, like the performance of something. And then I got some guy quoting these, you know, these consumer grade concepts that tool came out with working for Harman. I'm just sick of it. It doesn't apply to the situation where you have somebody that's really interested in the best sound quality they can get. It doesn't apply. It doesn't fit here. Okay. All those conclusions that he came to don't work in the world of real you know, interest in sound quality.